April 15th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Judges chapters 1 through 3 of the Old Testament. After Joshua died, the Israelites asked the Lord, Who should lead the invasion against the Canaanites and launch the attack? The Lord said, The men of Judah should take the lead. Be sure of this. I am handing the land over to them. The men of Judah said to their relatives, the men of Simeon, Invade our allotted land with us and help us attack the Canaanites. Then we will go with you into your allotted land. So the men of Simeon went with them. The men of Judah attacked and the Lord handed the Canaanites and Perizzites over to them. They killed 10,000 men at Bezek. They met Adonai Bezek at Bezek and fought him. They defeated the Canaanites and Perizzites. When Adonai Bezek ran away, they chased him and captured him. Then they cut off his thumbs and big toes. Adonai Bezek said, Seventy kings with thumbs and big toes cut off, used to lick up food scraps under my table. God has repaid me for what I did to them. They brought him to Jerusalem where he died. The men of Judah attacked Jerusalem and captured it. They put the sword to it and set the city on fire. Later, the men of Judah went down to attack the Canaanites living in the hill country, the Negev, and the lowlands. The men of Judah attacked the Canaanites living in Hebron. Hebron used to be called Kiriath Arba. They killed Shishai, Ahiman, and Talmai. From there, they attacked the people of Deber. Deber used to be called Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said to the man who attacks and captures Kiriath Sefer, I will give my daughter, Aksa, as a wife. When Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother, captured it, Caleb gave him his daughter, Aksa, as a wife. One time, Aksa came and charmed her father so she could ask him for some land. When she got down from her donkey, Caleb said to her, What would you like? She answered, Please give me a special present. Since you have given me land in the Negev, now give me springs of water. So Caleb gave her both the upper and lower springs. Now the descendants of the Kenite, Moses' father-in-law, went up with the people of Judah from the city of date palm trees to Arad in the desert of Judah located in the Negev. They went and lived with the people of Judah. The men of Judah went with their brothers, the men of Simeon, and defeated the Canaanites living in Zephath. They wiped out Zephath, so people now call the city Horma. The men of Judah captured Gaza, Ashkelon, Ekron, and the territory surrounding each of these cities. The Lord was with the men of Judah. They conquered the hill country, but they could not conquer the people living in the coastal plain because they had chariots with iron-rimmed wheels. Caleb received Hebron just as Moses had promised. He drove out the three Anakites. The men of Benjamin, however, did not conquer the Jebusites living in Jerusalem. The Jebusites lived with the people of Benjamin in Jerusalem to this very day. When the men of Joseph attacked Bethel, the Lord was with them. When the men of Joseph spied out Bethel, it used to be called Luz, the spies spotted a man leaving the city. They said to him, If you show us a secret entrance into the city, we will reward you. He showed them a secret entrance into the city, and they put the city to the sword, but they let the man and his extended family leave safely. He moved to Hittite country and built a city. He named it Luz, and it has kept that name to this very day. The men of Manasseh did not conquer Beth Shan, Tanakh, or their surrounding towns, nor did they conquer the people living in Dor, Iblium, Megiddo, or their surrounding towns, the Canaanites managed to remain in those areas. Whenever Israel was strong militarily, they forced the Canaanites to do hard labor, but they never totally conquered them. The men of Ephraim did not conquer the Canaanites living in Gezer. The Canaanites lived among them in Gezer. The men of Zebulun did not conquer the people living in Kitron and Nahalah, the Canaanites lived among them and were forced to do hard labor. The men of Asher did not conquer the people living in Akko or Sidon, nor did they conquer Alab, 
Akzib, Helba, Aphek, or Rehob. The people of Asher lived among the Canaanites residing in the land because they did not conquer them. The men of Naphtali did not conquer the people living in Beth Shemesh or Beth Anath. They live among the Canaanites residing in the land. The Canaanites living in Beth Shemesh and Beth Anath were forced to do hard labor for them. The Amorites forced the people of Dan to live in the hill country. They did not allow them to live in the coastal plain. The Amorites managed to remain in Har Harez, Ajalon, and Shealbum. Whenever the tribe of Joseph was strong militarily, the Amorites were forced to do hard labor. The border of Amorite territory ran from the Scorpion Ascent to Sela and on up. The Lord's angelic messenger went up from Gilgal to Boikam. He said, I brought you up from Egypt and led you into the land I had solemnly promised to give to your ancestors. I said, I will never break my agreement with you, but you must not make an agreement with the people who live in this land. You should tear down the altars where they worship, but you have disobeyed me. Why would you do such a thing? At that time, I also warned you, if you disobey, I will not drive out the Canaanites before you. They will ensnare you and their gods will lure you away. When the Lord's messenger finished speaking these words to all the Israelites, the people wept loudly. They named that place Boikam and offered sacrifices to the Lord there. When Joshua dismissed the people, the Israelites went to their allotted portions of territory, intending to take possession of the land. The people worshipped the Lord throughout Joshua's lifetime and as long as the elderly men who outlived him remained alive. These men had witnessed all the great things the Lord had done for Israel. Joshua, son of Nun, the Lord's servant, died at the age of 110. The people buried him in his allotted land in timnath Hiris, in the hill country of Ephraim, north of Mount Gash. That entire generation passed away. A new generation grew up that had not personally experienced the Lord's presence or seen what he had done for Israel. The Israelites did evil before the Lord by worshipping the Baals. They abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors who brought them out of the land of Egypt. They followed other gods, the gods of the nations who lived around them. They worshipped them and made the Lord angry. They abandoned the Lord and worshipped Baal and the Ashtars. The Lord was furious with Israel and handed them over to robbers who plundered them. He turned them over to their enemies who lived around them. They could not withstand their enemies' attacks. Whenever they went out to fight, the Lord did them harm, just as he had warned and solemnly vowed he would do. They suffered greatly. The Lord raised up leaders who delivered them from these robbers, but they did not obey their leaders. Instead, they prostituted themselves to other gods and worshipped them. They quickly turned aside from the path their ancestors had walked. Their ancestors had obeyed the Lord's commands, but they did not. When the Lord raised up leaders for them, the Lord was with each leader and delivered the people from their enemies while the leader remained alive. The Lord felt sorry for them when they cried out in agony because of what their harsh oppressors did to them. When a leader died, the next generation would again act more wickedly than the previous one. They would follow after other gods, worshipping them and bowing down to them. They did not give up their practices or their stubborn ways. The Lord was furious with Israel. He said, This nation has violated the terms of the agreement I made with their ancestors by disobeying me, so I will no longer remove before them any of the nations that Joshua left unconquered when he died. Joshua left those nations to test Israel. I wanted to see whether or not the people would carefully walk in the path marked out by the Lord, as their ancestors were careful to do. This is why the Lord permitted these nations to remain and did not conquer them immediately. He did not hand them over to Joshua. These were the nations the Lord permitted to remain so he could use them to test Israel. He wanted to test all those who had not experienced battle against the Canaanites. He left those nations simply because he wanted to teach the subsequent generations of Israelites 
who had not experienced the earlier battles how to conduct holy war. These were the nations, the five lords of the Philistines, all the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites living in Mount Lebanon, from Mount Baal Hermon to Lebo Hamath. They were left to test Israel so the Lord would know if his people would obey the commands he gave their ancestors through Moses. The Israelites lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. They took the Canaanites' daughters as wives and gave their daughters to the Canaanites. They worshipped their gods as well. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They forgot the Lord their God and worshipped the Baals and the Asherahs. The Lord was furious with Israel and turned them over to King Cushan Rishathaim of Aram Nahareim. They were Cushan Rishathaim subjects for eight years. When the Israelites cried out for help to the Lord, he raised up a deliverer for the Israelites who rescued them. His name was Othniel, son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. The Lord's Spirit empowered him and he led Israel. When he went to do battle, the Lord handed over to him King Cushan Rishathaim of Aram, and he overpowered him. The land had rest for forty years. Then Othniel, son of Kenaz, died. The Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. The Lord gave King Eglon of Moab control over Israel because they had done evil in the Lord's sight. Eglon formed alliances with the Ammonites and Amalekites. He came and defeated Israel, and they seized the city of date palm trees. The Israelites were subject to King Eglon of Moab for 18 years. When the Israelites cried out for help to the Lord, he raised up a deliverer for them. His name was Ehud, son of Gera the Benjamite, a left-handed man. The Israelites sent him to King Eglon of Moab with their tribute payment. Ehud made himself a sword. It had two edges and was 18 inches long. He strapped it under his coat on his right thigh. He brought the tribute payment to King Eglon of Moab. Now Eglon was a very fat man. After Ehud brought the tribute payment, he dismissed the people who had carried it. But he went back once he reached the carved images at Gilgal. He said to Eglon, I have a secret message for you, O king. Eglon said, Be quiet. All his attendants left. When Ehud approached him, he was sitting in his well-ventilated upper room all by himself. Ehud said, I have a message from God for you. When Eglon rose up from his seat, Ehud reached with his left hand, pulled the sword from his right thigh, and drove it into Eglon's belly. The handle went in after the blade, and the fat closed around the blade, for Ehud did not pull the sword out of his belly. As Ehud went out into the vestibule, he closed the doors of the upper room behind him and locked them. When Ehud had left, Eglon's servants came and saw the locked doors of the upper room. They said, He must be relieving himself in the well-ventilated inner room. They waited so long they were embarrassed, but he still did not open the doors of the upper room. Finally, they took the key and opened the doors. Right before their eyes was their master, sprawled out dead on the floor. Now Ehud had escaped while they were delaying. When he passed the carved images, he escaped to Syrah. When he reached Syrah, he blew a trumpet in the Ephraimite hill country. The Israelites went down with him from the hill country with Ehud in the lead. He said to them, Follow me, for the Lord is about to defeat your enemies, the Moabites. They followed him, captured the fords of the Jordan River opposite Moab, and did not let anyone cross. That day they killed about 10,000 Moabites, all strong, capable warriors. Not one escaped. Israel humiliated Moab that day, and the land had rest for 80 years. After Ehud came Shamgar, son of Anath. He killed 600 Philistines with an ox goad and, like Ehud, delivered Israel. Okay, God, I'm just going to be honest. I don't like judges. <laughs> I don't like reading this part of the Bible because it hits too close to home. This cycle that the Israelites 
are in your chosen people touches way way too close to the cycle that we get in with you <sighs> the Israelites would do what was evil in your sight God we choose sin and other gods over you constantly you allow Israel the nation to be conquered and oppressed by the neighboring nations and because we sin against you, you allow us to receive consequences of those sins. The nation of Israel would cry out to you when they got themselves into all of these situations. We cry out to you and say, God, God, why won't you listen to me? God, have you abandoned me? <laughs> Completely forgetting it was our own choice of sin that got us there in the first place. And then for Israel, you sent them a judge to help lead them out of their sinful nature, remind them of what they were supposed to be. And then we would see the judge pass away and we'd see the same cycle all over again. However, we don't even wait around for somebody who's influential in our life to pass away. We seem to repeat the cycle daily with you. God, I just pray that as we go through judges and as people listen to your word in judges, that they not only obviously see our own sinful cycle in judges, but more importantly, that you help us take steps to change that cycle. I don't want to be caught in that cycle. There's no point to that cycle except for my own selfishness, God. I am tired of crying out to you to save me when it was my sinful choice in the first place that got me there as though it's your fault that I'm in this mess and I know it's not I know you wanted so much more for me you wanted better than what I chose in my own life God help me understand this cycle help me understand why I do this cycle and more importantly teach me the steps I need to take to get out of this cycle it all comes down to obedience if I'm obedient to your, your word, if I'm obedient to your path, if I'm obedient to your will, I won't get into all of these messes. Um, and, and we look back on, on stories like Joshua, uh, Joshua and Judges and even parts um, of Exodus and Deuteronomy where we're like, oh, couldn't the Israelites have gotten it? Like you kept showing them and they kept being bad. <laughs> you kept showing them and they kept being bad. But we're no different. In fact, I think sometimes we are worse because we see your grace and your forgiveness, I think, even more than the Israelites did because we are so of the world now. We have so many worldly distractions that, that garner our sinful attentions. So help us today, God, as we read Judges. Help us to connect with the fact that we do the same thing that people thousands and thousands of years ago did. Help us connect to the fact that you were consistent and faithful in your love and devotion to that, that nation, just like you are faithful to us, that you will never leave us and that you will always want what is best for us. Help us to hold on to that instead of making these intermediary selfish choices that we make that we think will appease us. But just like the Israelites will only appease us momentarily. I think sometimes we miss the point of how connected we are to the Israelites. Because they were worshipping Baal and uh, the goddesses at that time. Baal required uh, prostitution in the temple. Baal required child sacrifices. Uh, and we think, gosh, we're better than them. We don't do that. But we commit adultery. We have sinful natures. We do things that harm our children and keep them away from God and learning about that relationship by our own actions. I don't know, I'd say we were pretty close to what they were doing back then. God, today, show me the first steps I need to take to get out of that cycle. Show me the areas of obedience where I'm missing it. Some of them I know, <laughs> I'm working on those. Other ones I don't know. So please either show me those or have other people show me those. 
gosh, God, I just want to be an amazing child for you. I want to be a reflection of your sovereignty, of your grace, of your faithfulness, of your forgiveness. And I can't do that if I keep choosing sin over and over and over again in my own life. God, today I'm asking for help to get out of that cycle of crying out to you, receiving what I need, and then going back to old habits again. I know only through you can we break any of those sinful cycles. It is only because of you and the strength that you're going to give us that will help us get out of those situations. God, I'm excited to hear how you've answered these prayers of ours and excited to see what you do with these people's lives. In your son's name I pray. Amen.